And uh, let me introduce the first speaker. First speaker is uh, Aviv Emanuel from Tel Aviv University in Israel. And he's going to talk about uh, inhibition of supplementary motor area effects distribution on effort over time. Okay. Let me just uh, show my screen. Okay. So uh, thank you very much, Muno. And um, uh, as Muno said, generally my topic uh, is, is uh, effort allocation over time, which means um, that uh, I mainly tackle uh, um, everyday issues, such as how do we uh, maintain uh, our focus during one class or one talk? Uh, how do we persist in, uh, in working out? over a period of, uh, let's say, a few months or so. And, uh, and mostly from uh, everyday experience, if you go and ask people, they say it's pretty hard thing to do. People generally find it hard to persist in, uh, in prolonged endeavors. And accordingly, also, uh, and accordingly, um, effort allocation models uh, suggest the same. Okay. We have uh, uh, theories which suggest that there's a depletion of either a mental resource over time or a physiological resource, uh, or maybe even accumulation of cognitive action costs over time, and even uh, physiological substrates. If we're doing it like uh, a very uh, tedious physiological, uh, physical uh, task, like lifting weights or, or going for a run. And we also have uh, uh, motivational accounts. Uh, for example, um, uh, our motivation might, might shift from exploiting in general uh, a certain resource or a certain task um, to another to exploring other tasks or other goals. And this happens over time. So our motivation to perform a certain focal task decreases. Uh, so generally, all of these models predict that effort decreases over time we would uh, exert most of our effort at the beginning of our task. And then uh, generally, we, we will uh, uh, gradually decrease our, our effort exertion. Um, we can just test this prediction out simply um, by looking at uh, more data performances in track athletes. Uh, so this group took uh, uh, more data performances uh, from over 80 years. And, uh, and just observe how fast uh, these, these athletes run. So on the x-axis, we have a division um, of, uh, of intervals for each track. And on the y-axis, we have a running speed for each interval. And what we can see that from one mile on, people exert something uh, rather, I think, it is not predicted by, by the previous ones. People um, uh, initially decrease their effort exertion until the middle of the task, but then they increase their effort, uh, effort exertion again near the end. So we get some sort of a U-shaped pattern, uh, which is not predicted by, by most prominent models, both in psychology and, and, uh, and psychology. Um, this pattern of behavior um, is called the stuck in the middle effect or U shaped pattern in effort exertion. And exists in also uh, other fields, uh, athletic competitions, uh, for example, in swimming, in cycling, uh, and in rowing, and also in lap studies. Um, also, uh, when we, we uh, observe cognitive behaviors like uh, quirking typos over a series of nine articles, people quirk typos uh, uh, at the fastest rate uh, at the beginning and end of the task, but not in the middle. Uh, and also when people exert uh, uh, voluntary con contractions, muscle, muscular contractions, when they ask to repeal and perform these uh, muscular contractions, they also uh, uh, exhibit this U-shaped pattern. So why does it happen? Uh, we have a general theoretical mechanism for, for this behavior which is kind of elaboration of, of uh, the most uh, uh, prominent models I discussed before. Uh, and without going into too much detail, detail uh, I can say that it is generally um, uh, claimed that the action value 
I mean value of performing a certain action uh, is uh, at its highest near the starting point and the ending point of tasks. Uh, meaning that uh, closer to the starting point of a task, uh, my action value will be perceived uh, as very high. And during the middle of a task, uh, I will perceive my action value uh, as going downwards. And, uh, and again, near the end of a task, action value will increase. So uh, the starting point and end point act as references for action value. Um, Again, without going to too many details. Um, now, so far, for uh, for constructing a, a comprehensive model of effort exertion or effort allocation over time, uh, we also need a neural mechanism. Uh, it would it would help if we would get like a neural uh, a, a grasp of what what under, underlies this behavior. Um, but so far we have a little bit problem with, with this, uh, this issue uh, because most of uh, uh, motivational neuroscience uh, employed relatively short, uh, short durations of behavior. It mostly concerns effort-related related, decision-making uh, and not effort uh, exertion over prolonged periods. It mostly employed uh, correlational methods, which is okay, which is very, very insightful, uh, but we can't tell what causally um, uh, causes uh, certain behavior or certain effort allocation pattern over time. Um, so we have to develop our own paradigm. Uh, we try to develop a paradigm for the study of, of these U-shaped patterns uh, that enables us to study it in the lab. So participants had to play this game, this uh, spaceship game. They had to control a spaceship uh, appears appearing in the middle of the screen. We control the spaceship using, using the arrow keys and, uh, and they had to shoot using the space bar. Each accurate shot uh, in last word gains them uh, 10 points. And at the top right corner of the screen, uh, you can see your score. And at the top corner of the screen, you can see a timer and the progress bar, indicating how much time you have left until the end of the plot. Now, your goal or participants' goal is to achieve as many points as possible um, because we will, we will generally uh, get a monetary reward if we reach uh, a certain criteria. The criterion was unknown to them and uh, was just, uh, uh, we told them uh, if they reached or not in, in the end of the experiment. So uh, I jumped a little bit ahead. This is a typical result. This is a result of our pretest. Um, we divided the time, the 10 minutes block into seven equal uh, time segments. Um, and on the y-axis, you can see the frequency of space bar presses, um, which was standardized within participant. So what we, we generally see is uh, this U-shaped pattern uh, in key presses. The space bar is, is the, the key that enables you to shoot asteroids. So this was our, our measure of effort session. Um, and this pattern also replicates in other, other pretests, other experiments. We conducted uh, uh, three more control experiments, uh, which uh, indicated that uh, this U shaped pattern uh, does not appear when the task uh, lacks a clear uh, endpoint, when the ta task lacks a, a timer or progress bar. And the U shaped pattern does not appear when the task is too short, for example, uh, two minutes or less. Um, so um, we try to uh, next just to assume what, what can be the neural underpinnings uh, of this, uh, this kind of pattern. And we thought the supplementary motor area might be involved or might, uh, might be in play in certain uh, aspects of this task uh, because the, the SMA uh, was thought to be, uh, to be involved in the coding of effort costs. Uh, for example, if people uh, anticipate their effort to be higher, the, the bold uh, signal from the SMA increases. And, um, and also uh, TMS, inhibitory TMS to the SMA, uh, was found to reduce participants' effort perception in a subsequent uh, uh, squeezing task. So 
um, our task, what we thought is that if we, yeah, we have, a, a, I wrote it down, yeah, but uh, it's not, not important, we're not going into too many detail. We thought uh, in first experiment that if we can inhibit the SNA, uh, we might uh, somehow alter the, the change in effort cost over time, which is reference dependent. And, uh, and therefore um, uh, cause a change in how effort is allocated over time. So what we did, uh, we, um, we took participants to three sessions. On the first session, we had a task familiarization, uh, which was a 10 minutes uh, block and localizer step, uh, which we just they had to tap the fingers. On the next session, we had SMA uh, stimulation, RTMS uh, at 120% of resting motor threshold. We have uh, two more minutes. Uh, no, no problem. It's perfect. Uh, and uh, which is the, the inhibitory RTMS lasted uh, 15 minutes and followed by dance. I mean, here was the RTMS to the SMA. And up next, we had the control simulation uh, to the, the preconius, and which was followed by the dance. This is what we got. Again, in the x-axis, we have a division of the 10 minutes block to uh, seven equal time segments. On the y axis, we have standardized key presses. And what we found is that the SMA, the increase in effort in the SMA condition, which is represented by the black line, uh, is was steeper than in the control condition. And we also validated this, uh, this result by comparing the SMA condition to the uh, block from the familiarization session in which no, uh, no stimulation was administered. So uh, to conclude this uh, short talk, uh, we can say that the SMA uh, is involved in, uh, in real time action, uh, action value coding rather than discrete uh, decision making. This discrete uh, cost of decision, effort related decision making. Uh, it changes over time and also inhibiting the SMA caused uh, the value, uh, assuming, assumingly, uh, value of effort to, to change uh, uh, to a larger extent. Uh, furthermore, we can say that the more the SMA is active, the more equally effort is distributed over, over time. So it might have some functional uh, uh, advantages we might not want to, to fluctuate our performance uh, um, over very uh, long periods because it might uh, be not so smart energetically, only just assumptions. And also uh, we, had, uh, we, have, we have the basis of, for a further theoretical development of a more comprehensive models of effort exertion. So I want to thank uh, uh, my advisors, uh, Nira Lieberman here and Nitsan Senzo, and Jasmine Ashaga. Nitsan and Nira, I think these are pictures from them uh, Ten years ago, but uh, uh, Jasmine, she, she looked about the same. Uh, so, if you want to reach me out, you, you can. And uh, now, if we have some time for uh, two questions, I think uh, that you can. Uh, you thanks know. so much. Thanks so much, Tel Aviv. Uh, um, um, are, are there any questions from from the audience? In the moment, I can't see any questions. Okay, if there are no questions, then I have one question, Avi. Uh, can these results be explained merely by motor inhibition? Well, we ran a, a control analysis uh, to tackle this issue. Um, and actually, let's say if I can show. Okay, so actually, um, if we have accounts, motor inhibition accounts, we predict that uh, the less the SMA is active, the less people are able to, to move their hand and they should uh, press the space bar less. So we compared the, the uh, rate of, uh, of key presses uh, across the whole block between the control and SMA conditions. And uh, we found they were pretty much similar. Uh, also ran a base and t-test and, and it, there's a small, uh, small evidence in favor of, uh, of, uh, of a null effect. Also, uh, space space bar presses were highly correlated, uh, so it kind of uh, devalues effort inhibition effects. I hope. Uh, any more questions? Hi, Aviv. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Hi, uh, thanks for your talk. Uh, I I thought it was really interesting. I've never seen a kind of U-shaped curve like that for efforts over time. 
Do you have like any intuition about why we've evolved like that? Why it's better to put effort in the beginning and end instead of the middle? Well, uh, my my intuition is that we are uh, we're pretty much uh, programmed towards uh, short term uh, short term benefits other than than long term. So so if we have like a long term goal, uh, we we don't plan accordingly, uh, right? So so we're, we're mostly affected by by proximity to to these uh, spatial cues like uh, starting point, ending points, and and this enables us maybe uh, to. Uh, to maybe tackle multiple goals at once, just um, solving what's most important right now, what's most, most uh, you know, uh, the task with the shortest time frame is most urgent, and then we can achieve multiple goals. This is my, my general intuition, but, but I don't know, you need, need to run more experiments, maybe. Uh, mm. I, I hope it, it answers me, this question. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, well, there was another question from uh, Gunnar, however, we have to stick to